Welcome back to Module 9 of Setting Up a Journal with OJS 3.0, Workflow Settings. This is Unit 3 of this module, Review. This section controls the parameters of the submission review process, including deadlines, forms, peer review parameters and guidelines, and policies regarding competing interests. The review guidelines are not visible on the public website and are used by editors and reviewers working on submissions within the dashboard. That process is discussed in detail in the Editing a Journal with OJS 3.0 course. Let's take a look at setting up these features. To access the Review Settings page, go to your dashboard using the link at the top right-hand corner of your page. Hover over Settings in the left-hand navigation and select Workflow. Review is the third tab along the top of the new window. Your first prompt is regarding the setting of review deadlines. You can choose to set a time limit defining how many weeks a reviewer has to either accept or decline a request to review a submission, and how many weeks they have to complete their review of that submission. If you choose to add limited timeframes, be sure to include them in the review guidelines below so that your reviewers are aware of these policies and deadlines. Following you have the ability to set automated email reminders. We'll talk about the content of these emails in Module 9, Unit 5. Automated reminders require some configuration by your site administrator, but once the task is completed, these grayed out boxes will be active and you can use the drop down menus to select the reminder email schedule. Review forms are used by reviewers to help structure their feedback on submissions. Forms are entirely in the control of journal managers and are created in a two-step process, beginning with Create Review Form in the top right corner of the box. Give your new form a title and then complete a brief description and instructions for use. Click Save. To add items to your form, click on the expansion arrow beside the title and click Edit. In the pop-up wizard, the data we just entered in the Create window will all be located in the first tab. It can be edited here as well. Click on the second tab, Form Items. In this section, we'll create items to be included in the form by clicking on Create New Item. The Rich Text Editor gives you lots of space and flexibility in crafting each of your form items. After you define them, you have the option to make this item's completion a required action. You can also elect to inform the submission author through an automated email if this form is going to be used to review their submission. Item type refers to the kind of response the reviewer will be able to make to this checklist item, such as to enter a short text blurb or tick a box. Using the drop-down menu, select the item type that facilitates the appropriate response to your checklist item. If you want your reviewer to select a response from a list of preset options, such as to select whether the submission is ready for publication, needs to be revised, or should be rejected, you can set these options using the response options. To add a response option, click Add Item. When you've completed the form, click Save. If you need to edit the items or you want to remove it, click on the expansion arrow to expose the Edit and Delete buttons. Repeat this process for every item you wish to add to the form. The third tab in the wizard is the Preview Form. Clicking on it will show you what your review form will look like to those using it. This can help you tweak the item type and ensure that the form you're creating matches with your use intentions of the form. To close the wizard, return to the Review Form tab and click Save at the bottom. When your form is ready to be used, be sure to tick the Active button. If your journal is using Blind Review, 
Enable the function to send relevant instructions and information. Clicking on the hyperlink text will open a window with more information about this feature. Competing interest is an area where you can define your journal's competing interest disclosure policy. It is a rich text editor, and you can customize this section as best serves you. If you require a competing interest statement from the reviewer, tick this box. The Review Guidelines section is a space in which you can define what is expected of your reviewers, provide them with review criteria to help them assess the submission, and any guidelines or policies that would help reviewers complete their work, such as the deadlines to accept review or the deadline to submit their review. It is a rich text editor, and you can complete it as best suits your journal. Following, you can select whether the review process will be double-blind, blind, or open using the drop-down menu. Finally, we come to Reviewer Access, which tweaks how and when reviewers can access submissions they have been asked to review. If you would like to either enable one-click review access or stipulate that reviewers must agree to review before they are able to access submission files, tick the appropriate boxes. When you've completed the settings to your satisfaction, click Save. This concludes our overview of the review workflow settings. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next module.